guys, welcome back! This is the perfect time to review Maldita Castilla, also known as Cursed Castilla, this extended and limited PS4 physical release. So, are you ready to go back to the glory of arcade times? Let's take a look! As you know, I spent most of my teenage years around arcades. I would venture into those obscure and smoke infested places just like if it was my second home. Ghosts and Goblins and its sequel Ghouls and Ghosts were titles that always attracted players due to its ambience, playability and audiovisual environment. So, Loco Malito or Juan Becerra, the Spanish developer behind this jam, was inspired mainly by that classic from 1985 and, as stated on his own page, he's graduated in the arcade rooms and his goal is to create new old-looking games. For that, he gathers all the bits from his favorite arcade classics and implements those into his creations. Pixel art, cheap tunes and intense action are the three main ingredients of Loco Malito's games. Prior to Maldita Castilla and besides others, he offered us the following amazing gems. And these are all free-to-play games. All this was made in his spare time, at night, cause, you know, life, life happens. But he doesn't work alone, those amazing tunes were composed by a talented dude known as Grisor87 and the fabulous promo illustrations and cover art were created by Marek Barej. Just like all the previous titles mentioned, Maldita Castilla was originally developed for PC back in 2012 as a free-to-play game and in 2016 arrived to the Xbox One and PS4 digital stores in a definitive and extended version, firstly in the United States and a few months later in Europe. I was already playing around with the PC free-to-play version since I came across it on a forum a couple years ago and Idora was another game from Loco Malito that really grabbed my attention and kind of woke up my passion for the old days of video gaming. This jam even helped on kickstarting my YouTube channel, so thank you so much Loco Malito! That's why the Spanish industry has a place of honor on its a pixel thing. Maldita Castilla is obviously and mainly inspired by the aesthetics of the Ghost series, but its plot is highly focused in Spanish history and mythology, in where the Kingdom of Castile is haunted by hordes of demonic creatures set free by an ancient demon. The action takes place around the year 1081 and King Alfonso VI orders his knights Don Ramiro, Quezada, Mendoza and Don Diego to travel to Tolomera with the goal of rescuing the kingdom from the claws of those evil entities mentioned earlier. Besides that, it's also based on a 16th century Spanish novel by the name Amadis de Gaula and packed with references to other old arcade games like Black Tiger, Shinobi, Rygar, Karnov, Tiger Road and Trojan, just to name a few. Gladly, the extreme difficulty of its older and spiritual brothers was completely left aside. The first level even functions as a sort of tutorial to set the mood of things to come and to get players familiarized with the controls. It also features four different endings, but many factors must be taken into consideration if we even want to have a glimpse to the final level. There's a ton of different enemies and attacks, 
But there's also something about Maldita Castilla that simply doesn't fall into the abyss of frustration like many others in the genre. The controls are pretty damn solid and the action is fast and furious and in some bosses trial and error is a perfect thing and by the time we understand the enemy's pattern we're in business and ready to tackle another wave of terror and destruction. And the more enemies we slain, the more powers we are able to harvest to finally get the much appreciated double jump. Back in April of 2017, a physical PS4 release and limited to 3000 copies was announced and made available through Play Asia. And I was lucky enough to grab copy number 641 for my game room. But as you know, my luck ran out when the item was held in customs here in Portugal, even so, and after being held for over 4 months, it was finally delivered at my doorstep. Check my video where I explained in detail what happened and do a sort of unboxing of this amazing edition. A special word goes to the soundtrack that, by the way, comes bundled in a real CD and that I've already ripped to MP3 format and simply goes everywhere I go. It was created using the iconic 3 channel YM2203 sound chip developed by Yamaha that left a huge mark in those glory days not only on the arcades but also on a bunch of NEC computers throughout the 80s and early 90s. Please visit locomalito.com to grab all these goodies for PC and a bunch other platforms. If you love these new old looking games, you've came to the right place. Compared with its original 2012 release, this extended version has a few changes here and there, 8 levels instead of 6, 19 bosses instead of 14 and extra display options for aspect ratio, CRT effects and an arcade marquee. It's totally worth it and was only possible with a huge help from the publisher Abbey Light Studios that just announced a 4000 physical and limited release for the PS Vita. So guys, hope you've enjoyed this episode and to grab all my future content, don't forget to click that bell icon so that you're notified when a new video becomes available. Also, don't forget to like, to comment, to share and to subscribe to It's a Pixel Thing. In the meanwhile, check these other videos and all the others available on my channel. They will certainly bring awesome memories of the good old glory days of video gaming. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Come <laughs>